Hey everybody, welcome back to lesson five in the Foundations of Algebra course. Let's get right to it. So we know that algebra is the study of the operations on the real numbers, and we spent our last four lessons really getting comfortable with the real numbers. So we know who they are, we know where they live, we know how many of them there are. Man, there are just so many integers, fractions, irrationals. We really got a good handle on the real numbers. So now it's time to turn our attention to the operations. So let's do it. Now, the first thing you need to know about the four operations is that there aren't four. Someone's been fooling you this whole time. If they tell you four, nah, there are two. Turns out subtraction is really addition and division is really multiplication. We'll talk more about what that means in a second, but you should know that there are two operations addition and multiplication. That's it. We're going to start with addition, so let's get to it. There are a few basic facts you got to know about uh, addition before we can actually do some of it, and here they are. Zero is the additive identity. Remember that that just means if you take zero and add it to any real number, it just preserves that real number's identity. In other words, it keeps it the same. So like four plus zero is four, or zero plus four is four. All right, it preserves the identity. Zero is that guy. It also turns out that every single real number has an additive inverse or opposite. So for example, the opposite of two fifths is negative two fifths. We saw this uh, with the integers before. And what that means, and you know, that when you add a number together with its opposite, total annihilation, you get zero. All right. Last big idea, addition is commutative, which means the order in which you add the numbers doesn't matter. Two plus three, what you get is exactly the same as if you do three plus two. They're both five. All right, nothing to it. Let's do some addition. Let's go. All right, how about this one? Let's add negative 20 plus 28. Ah, well you say, you know what? I'm already good at that, beautiful. Okay, we've been adding integers. Um, remember, we could do the N's and P's, uh, or we could ask those questions. Who's going to win this fight? It looks like positives, right? More positives there than negatives. And by how much? Eight. There we go. All right, nothing to it. We got a good handle on adding integers. But here's something we didn't look at. What about this? Negative six plus negative three. I don't think there's going to be any annihilating going on here, right? It's positives and negatives that hate each other. Negatives and negatives, well, that's just fine. Like, imagine writing the ends. Six ends, and then you put three more ends. Well, you're just getting more ends, right? In fact, you're getting nine ends. That brings up something really important. This is huge. It turns out, with addition, there's this main principle that's going to guide you for the rest of your mathematical life. The main principle of addition says the only things you can ever add are the same things. And when you add the same things, you get the same things back. Okay? Like we just saw with the negatives. Negatives and negatives, you just get more negatives. Let me show you how this works out with other types of numbers. For example, here, let me take one step back. How about this? If you got two dogs plus three dogs, your first question is, can you add them? And the answer is yes, obviously. But mathematically, why? Because the things are the same. Dogs and dogs, yes, you can add them. And when you add them, you get dogs. How many? Well, now you're looking at the numbers in front. Two of them plus three of them gives you five of them. Okay, do you see both parts of the main principle at work there? Good. Now, if you had two dogs plus three chairs, well, those are not the same thing, so we can't add them. Well, what I mean by that is we can't, we can't do anything with it. You just two dogs plus three chairs, you just get two dogs plus three chairs. Okay, you can't combine them. All right, how about this? What if you've got two sevenths plus three sevenths? Can you add them? Good, good, you're using the principle, yes. You can add them because they're both sevenths 
And when you add them, you're going to get sevens. And two, two of them plus three of them, still five of them. Five sevens. Ah, so just keep in mind, that's why we don't add the denominators. Those are the things. When you add the same things, you get the same things. Excellent. How about something like this? What if you wanted to add two thirds and four fifths? So ask yourself this question. Can we add them? Are the things the same? Thirds and fifths, are they the same things? No. All right. So we can't add them. But here's where we can get clever. Maybe we can convert two thirds and four, the, excuse me, the thirds and the fifths into the same things. Get a CD, right? Same things in the fraction wording just means a common denominator. So what should we use? Thirds and fifths, well, multiply them together, fifteenths. We can turn them into fifteenths. Let's convert. We do it by multiplying by one. So two thirds is really 10 fifteenths and four fifths is really 12 fifteenths. So let's, let's look at their new form. Can we add fifteenths and fifteenths? You betcha. We get fifteenths. How many? 22. Nothing to it. Okay. It's all about that main principle of addition. How about this? Two and one third plus one and one half. So we're talking mixed numbers now. We don't mess with them. We do not operate on mixed numbers. Let's just turn them into fractions. You know that every mixed number you can write as a fraction. So if we convert them into their fraction form, we're good to go. All right. That's just like the last problem. So we won't go any further. All right. Don't mess with mixed numbers. Convert them into fractions. Decimals. It turns out when you're adding decimals, you just line up the decimal point, right? Remember that from way back? Of course. But here's why. We line up the decimal points, not so much for the decimal points, but for the decimal place values to line up, right? We need to add tenths with tenths and hundredths with hundredths, thousandths with thousandths, okay? That's why we line up the points because we that lines up all the place values. And then you just add like normal. No big deal. Last thing to talk about is how to add irrational numbers. And the irrational numbers we've seen are the, are the, uh, have been mostly the roots. So can you add three square to twos to five square to twos? And here's where you just gotta be careful. I, I tried to say it in a particular way. The answer is yes, because here we're treating the square to twos like they're the things. So can you add square to twos to square to twos? Yeah, you bet. You're gonna get more square to twos how many? Three of them plus five of them. It's eight of them. Same way. All right. Just a, just in contrast, how about four square to sevens plus two square to elevenths? Can you add them? Here, the answer is no, right? Square to sevens and square to elevens, not the same things. You can't add them. You cannot add them. So what we get is just Four square to sevens plus two square to elevens. That's it. That's all we can do. Cool. All right. Let me clarify now what I meant by uh, subtraction is really addition. Here's what we mean specifically. Subtraction is really addition of the opposite. Subtraction is addition of the opposite. So how does that play out with numbers? Let me give you an example here. Let's say you wanted to subtract five minus seven. Well, subtracting seven is the same as adding the opposite of seven, right? So the opposite of seven is negative seven. So we'll do this problem, five plus negative seven. We got this, right? Who's going to win? Negatives by how many? Two, game over. But the key thing is subtracting seven, same as adding the opposite of seven, namely negative seven. Here's another one. Negative two minus three, same deal. Subtracting three is the same as adding the opposite of three, namely negative three. And now here we are. Negative two plus negative three, we get it, no annihilating, just a bunch of negatives. How many? Negative five. All right, last example here. Two minus negative eight. All right, subtracting negative eight is the same as adding the opposite of negative eight. The opposite of negative eight. That's eight. 
There it is. Two plus eight. Ah, okay, cool. Just positives here. No big deal. Ten. Looking all right? Now, I just want you to notice, since subtraction is really addition of the opposite, then the main principle of addition really holds for subtraction too, right? So there we go. The main principle of subtraction is the only things you can ever subtract are the same things. And when you subtract the same things, you get the same things. All right. So let's see how this plays out with some real numbers. All right. Let's say we want to subtract three fourths minus one third. Well, can we subtract them? Are they the same things? Fourths and thirds? No, you got it. All right, well, we know what to do. We can convert fractions into the same things, can't we? So uh, I won't take the time to do the work, but we can convert them into twelfths. There we go. So three fourths minus one third can't do it, but nine twelfths minus four twelfths? Beautiful. Twelfths and twelfths. Yes, we can add them and we're going to get nice twelfths. How many? All right, we'll just look. Nine minus four. All right, cool. We're set with that. That's five. Five twelfths. That's all there is to it. All right. Mixed numbers. All right, well, we know what to do. We, we can always convert mixed numbers into fractions. Here's just a quick example, because I know we didn't go through the one earlier. Here, just to be sure. Okay, we got an extra minute. What if you want to subtract two and one fourth minus one and seven eighths? All right, well, first things first, no mixed numbers. Let's go right to fractions so we can convert them. Nine fourths minus 15 eighths, can we add them? No, fourths and eighths are not the same thing, but let's convert. You know what I'm gonna do? Instead of doing 30 seconds, eight times four, I'm just gonna turn them both into eighths, okay? One of them already is eighths. So nine fourths, that's 18 eighths minus 15 eighths. Now, can we subtract eighths from eighths, you bet. They're the same things. We're going to get a bunch of eighths. How many? Look at the numbers. 18 minus 15, it's three eighths. You guys got this. Man, you're cooking. How about the other things? Um, decimals, yeah, you're all set. Just line them up just like before. And irrationals with the roots, yeah, just make sure you got the same roots and then you subtract them. Nothing to it. We are good to go. I will say this, we do want to make sure that we're good with applications, all this stuff we want to use in the real world. Um, so just look at these real quick. Addition is going to be used whenever you're looking for a total. You know, you work 20 hours one week, 10 hours the next week. What's the total number of hours you work? Or anything that involves an increase. The temperature was 30, it goes up 20 degrees. What's the, what's the new temperature? We're good to go. Subtraction, anytime you want to find a difference between two numbers, like there are 30 math majors, there are 17 English majors, what's the difference between them? Uh, how many more math majors are there? Things like that. Or a decrease. The temperature was 80 degrees, it decreased by 30 degrees, what's the new temperature? Stuff like that. But here's the best part. All those examples I gave you, they were just whole numbers right? But now we're good with any type of number. If you run two and a third miles in the morning and three and five eighths miles in the evening, how many total miles did you run? We're good to go. The numbers make no difference. Wait, this is the foundations of algebra course, isn't it? Well, how about this? I can't hold back. I got to give this a try. Can we add 4x squared y plus 6x squared y. You think we can add those? Get, come on, yell it out. Yes or no? Can we add those things? Woo! Yes! Yes, they are the same things. And if you add x squared y's to x squared y's, what do you get? Well, well hold on. I'm going to ask you. Yeah. You, no. To the right. My right. No, the other right. Okay, if you add x squared y's to x squared y's, what do you get? x squared y's. You got it. Awesome. We got the main principle of addition. So four of them plus six of them is 10 of them. 
We got it. We're all set. Can you add 2xy to 3x cubes? Eh, nice. Not the same things. Guys, it works even in algebra, and we're getting close. Awesome work today. Take care, and I'll see you in our next lesson.